Hi. Calling International Watch Rescue. Calling International Watch Rescue. Um, we have a watch here. This is a, for those um, who are familiar with The Legend of Zelda, you might recognize this. This is the official uh, Legend of Zelda watch. It's the official uh, merch. And uh, unfortunately, there you go. TNA, it's done by AccuTime Watch Corp. It's not a particularly expensive uh, watch, but anyway, um, it's got a stainless steel uh, case back, but the rest of it's not uh, stainless steel. Copyright 2022 Nintendo, The Legend of Zelda. So, yeah, if you're into it, um, you might know. Anyway, it's Kamigatsa. Um, it, unfortunately, is not waterproof. Um, it's just a press-in uh, back. It is, you know, it, it's not a screw-in uh, thing. You can see the little um, cut out there where you can, uh, you know, just insert a little screwdriver and eh, lift it up. And um, unfortunately, it accidentally went into a chlorine pool for, I don't know, probably an hour or so. And oops, um, we've got some rust under there. We've got some rust. So unfortunately, it's probably one of the worst things that can happen to any watch mechanism is a chlorine water because chlorine will attack all of the metal parts in here. And as you can see, like, it's been less than, oh, um, it, well, oh, yeah, I don't want to take it out. I don't know how the crown uh, shaft comes out of there. But anyway, um, yeah, it's not good. So we need to immediately, um, yeah, so it's only been like um, six hours or something since the watch was uh, submerged. It was submerged uh, today. So we have to, First is, is get rid of the chlorine, because the chlorine is going to continue to attack this watch. So hopefully we can save it, but um, I don't know. We're just going to try and neutralize it. I've got uh, filtered water here. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to submerge this in completely in filtered water to try and get all the, well, to try and get all the chlorine out of there. And uh, hopefully we can uh, at least stop the chlorine attacking any more parts in there and then maybe, maybe we can rescue it so we really need to I need to operate this thing I need to like, oh, crown yeah, push it in pull it out we need to actually operate this thing oh, yep <laughs> we need to operate this thing completely so to get filtered water completely into every part of this to try and wash out that chlorine as best we can. So, got to do this for a few minutes. Probably should have it under running water, but I don't have filtered running water here. Well, there we go. I do now, coming from the bottle. But, uh, yeah, it's not good. It's not good. So, I don't know how all this plastic comes out. Does that plastic back, that plastic back might lift off. If I hold that down and try and lift off the plastic back, will that get in there? I'm not sure. Don't want to be too harsh if any of this, but none of that really looks delicate. So, you know, it's not a super duper mechanism. It's just, you know, it's built down to a price. It's like the official merch for Legend of Zelda. Do want to try and rescue it, so maybe, maybe that plastic, yeah, it looks like it's not, it's not going through there. Maybe the plastic just lifts off and that's just holding the battery in place. So get that on there and I hold down that. Will that? Yes, yes, as predicted, as predicted. There you go. That just lifted off. So that's very nice. Now it can really, yeah, that just sits in there like that. That just sits in there that, oh, yeah, yeah, we can get the whole face off. Okay, no worries. Yeah, it's all good. Pour some water down into there. Pour water everywhere. Filtered water to the rescue. And as I said, we really want to, we really want to operate that to try and get filtered water into every single part of this possible and then after the filter water we want to get you don't want to leave the water in there of course because that's just going to continue to rust so try and get that out with some compressed air and then you would uh, try and 
use isopropyl to drive out the rest of the moisture. So let's get that, uh, that battery's gone, Ski. So let's get that out of there, shall we? Yeah. Yeah, that battery, geez, you know. That battery uh, was not nice, was it? Look at that. That's where, actually, is that where most of the rust has come from? I think most of the rust has come from that battery. Once we've driven the water out with the isopropyl, then you'd blow it again, but the isopropyl should evaporate. But, you know, definitely got to give it a good blow job uh, to try and drive it all out. And then we'd probably uh, put that in a uh, desiccant um, bag seal it in a bag with some de desiccant to leave it in there for a few days just to get all the remaining moisture out and an increased temperature would help um, but not too high just you know make it warm make it warm look at that but I, I think most of that's from the battery so not sure if we can get in there and clean that this is not the most gentle brush this is my PCB cleaning brush and has it gotten into the rest of the guts in there I'm not sure it's a Japanese mechanism it's not it's not a Chinese mechanism the watch is made in China but it's a Japanese movement not sure if it's got any jewels in there because they do actually have jewels when you say your watch is you know 12 jewels it means that they do actually have 12 like little you know they could be rubies or I don't know what they use in the mass-produced ones but uh, the jewels are actually jewels and they're just like low friction. They use them as low friction bearings. So that's what it means when your watch is X amount of joules. It just physically means it's with all the cogs in there. Yeah, it's not terrific, is it? Yeah, might be salvageable, but yeah, yeah, that's what the joules means. Now, a lot of people will say an ultrasonic bath and maybe, but you don't want to use, but the only stuff I've, you, uh, apparently you can get like specialist, specialist watch um, cleaning fluids for uh, the ultrasonic bars, but I don't have that. Um, I've only got like PCB um, flux removal type stuff. So that's no good. You don't want to use that on a watch mechanism. So uh, that is not good at all. That is not, but there are, I believe, purpose designed ones for watches but i don't have it haven't researched it good luck getting it now um with being at christmas time and everything else so all we can do now is actually stop the rot and hopefully get this bad boy going again so there's a lot of rust in there i need a gentler brush <laughs> but hopefully we have neutralized the chlorine so there we go i think that's probably a good enough rinse that should be just rinse that again move that again in water i think we've probably done all we can in terms of rinsing this thing out to get the chlorine out of it now i'll get some get some compressed air and try and blow out that water take the tray of water but be very careful I'm gonna come a gutter, surely. Yep, yep. All right. Unfortunately, I don't have the uh, the nozzly thing. Little tip: if you turn your air duster upside down, like that, you've got a freezer spray. That is, <laughs> you can freeze components. V very handy uh, tip if you just turn your air duster upside down. So useful for repair testing and stuff like that seeing if there's any thermal components but anyway turn the hands at the same time tongue at the right angle should have driven most of the moisture out oh no no there's still a whole bunch in there maybe she'll be okay but time for some isopropyl i think let's get some isopropyl in there you want the 100 percent jobby now that's 70 percent rubbish so 100% isopropyl, get that in there, rotate that sucker, give that another scrub. Isopropyl is actually not good for watch movements because uh, the jewels are often um, covered in shellac and or other 
type stuff and prop oh doesn't that look clean um and the isopropyl can attack that um it, it's not good so it's actually a solvent which will actually attack that so you can actually ruin your um your you know your jewel mounts and stuff like that so it's actually not a good idea to actually put this in an ultrasonic bath you might think oh yeah whack it in the ultrasonic bath with the isopropyl but eh, no you can come a guts of doing that you know the ultrasonic vibrations in there combined with the isopropyl uh will cause um damage even more damage to the um jewels in there and the well the jewel mounts and things like that so you don't you don't want to do that uh, that's a bad idea, but, but just, you know, we're pretty desperate here, so we, we want to clean out the moisture, so the isopropyl's good for that, but we don't want to go too far and whack it in the ultrasonic bath with the IPA, so I think that's pretty good. I think we've probably driven out most of the moisture. I'll give it another blowjob, and uh, then I think we're good to go. That should have driven out um, all of the remaining water, and... Any isopropyl will just evaporate and Bob's your uncle. As I said, you might be able to use some uh, proper... Oh, that's looking really dry now. <laughs> that's fantastic. Um, yeah, you might be able... I do believe you can get... Oh, maybe if I edit this video, I can put up uh, maybe overlay of what material watchmakers would... Um, what solvent watchmakers would use wouldn't be a solvent it'd be something else some sort of cleaning solution which you could potentially use in an ultrasonic bath that wouldn't destroy the um, coatings inside the mounts inside the watch so um, that looks super dry now that looks absolutely fantastically dry oh that contact over there for what the positive that's a bit how you're doing uh, it's still got maybe I can get something off that maybe I can get a cotton bud in there or something I, I might do a bit more work on it. It looks, but we have, should hopefully have stopped the rust, but you can see it's still there. So mm, another, if we can get some more decent life out of it, I'll be happy. So, but yeah, um, do not um, put any non-waterproof watch, not water resistant. Don't submerge water resistant watches. It's a big difference between waterproof and water resistant. Um, a proper waterproof watch will have o-rings and they will be uh, oil they will be um, silicon sealed as well they, they, you know they would have actually greased the o-rings uh, actually properly and um, you know so if it's if your watch is rated for 10 bars or whatever um, then you know you you're pretty hunky dory you can wear it in the pool but uh, no if chlorine gets in there like it did on this one for probably an hour or two before they realized they had their watch on and it wasn't waterproof. Oopsie. Probably one of the worst things that can happen to a watch mechanism, unfortunately. But anyway, we'll see what happens. I've probably done the best, best I can. So I will keep you updated in the comments down below. Because I'll just probably just upload this video. Um, and I'll let you know. I'm pretty confident we'll get it working again. How long it lasts? That's another question. So... Yeah, but that battery's gone, Ski. Look at that. Well, that sucker. There's where a ton of your rust has come from. <laughs> it's come from the watch. So, yeah. So maybe the other parts in here, maybe they're all um, uh, sort of, well, no, they're not stainless steel. No, I think only the case back is stainless steel. So anyway, yeah, we've got some surface rust on the back of that metal uh, fascia plate there. But um, the front of the watch looks in good nick, like the actual um, front face. We'll see. And yes, this is not rust. Like, it's supposed to look like this. This is the rustic, you know, look of the watch. So it actually came looking like that. Add some more rust. It's more authentic, I guess. <laughs> but there you go. Um, hopefully we can save, at least get it operational again, this watch. But chlorine, yeah. Chlorine and watch mechanisms, a real bad combination. So you want to get it real early and attempt... Well, we've done probably what we can at this stage. So, anyway, thoughts and comments down below. If you like the video, give it a big thumbs up. Catch you next time.